In 1956, Plymouth, Chevrolet, and Ford were all about 200 inches long and smaller in many other areas than the cars known today as full-sized Plymouths, Chevrolets, and Fords. Over the years since 1956, all three makes have grown bigger, but meanwhile, a number of other makes have been introduced to meet the demand for smaller, relatively inexpensive cars that were economical to operate. These cars competed with Rambler in the compact field, which Rambler had had to itself. In 1962, Ford Fairlane arrived. It had no revolutionary new features, and in size, it was a throwback to the 1956 versions of the low-priced three. This year, the three cars we call the BOP compacts are no longer compact, like the Fairlane. They are sized about the same as the 1956 models, and a new one has been added, the Chevrolet Chevelle. And so the competitive picture is seen by many a Plymouth Valiant salesman, like Joe Gates here, was one which he viewed with alarm. This year, he thought, the big market for the intermediates is opening up. And I'm not selling intermediates. I've got a very fine full-sized car and the finest of the compact cars, but nothing in between. But almost immediately, Joe Gates, like many another Plymouth Valiant salesman, did a double take on his very fine full-sized Plymouth and very fine compact-sized Valiant. It's true, thought Joe, that I'm not directly competitive, but I'm still very competitive. And there's a big opportunity here I'm not going to miss. But let's hear it from Joe. Sure, I was disturbed when the BOPs came out as intermediates and joined Fairlane and Rambler in that market segment, plus the new Chevelle. What's more, I noticed there was plenty of advertising and promotion to get people into the showrooms to have a look at the intermediates. As a matter of fact, I decided to have a look myself. I sort of had an idea maybe all this market activity might mean opportunity for me. I stopped in several showrooms, and I noticed the so-called intermediates came in strip-o models and in loaded models, just like other cars. Showroom traffic was good. Maybe sales would be good. But not everybody in those showrooms was buying intermediates. A lot of them were brought into the market by intermediate advertising and promotion. And I figured a great many of them would look at other cars too before they made up their minds. The question in my mind was, what do I tell a Plymouth or Valiant prospect who's also thinking about an intermediate? Seemed to me a preliminary answer to that one would be, qualify him as to what he really likes, big car benefits or compact car benefits, and either an intermediate, a compact, or a full-size car. What does he like? Low initial cost? Lowest initial cost plus some luxury features? Operating economy? Exceptional maneuverability? Easy parking? Seemed to me that Valiant V100, V200, and Signet 200 provided quite a number of good answers for the prospect who wants any or all of these things. Or, suppose he's interested in low initial cost, good operating economy, power and performance, big interior dimensions. In this case, Plymouth Savoy and Belvedere offer him all these benefits and more. But take another case. Suppose price and operating economy are not all important to a prospect, and what he really wants are luxury features, maybe sports car features, and high performance, best possible handling characteristics. Well, a prospect like this should be invited to get behind the wheel of a Fury or Sport Fury with power steering and take it out on the highway, along with me, of course, or you. What I'm getting at is that many people who are thinking about the in-betweens, we can sell up to a full-size Plymouth or down to a compact Valiant. If we first qualify them, that is, on the kind of benefits they really consider most important. On a chart, you can see that Valiant's shorter length can mean plenty and easier parking, better maneuverability, particularly as compared with the BOPs. 
On another chart, you can see the difference in Plymouth's full-size car overall length and the shorter length of the others, particularly as compared with Fairlane, Chevelle, and Rambler Classic. Still another chart shows you the difference between Plymouth's full-size car luggage capacity and those of the in-between cars. Valiant, incidentally, has more luggage capacity than Classic and as much as Fairlane. But dimensions and their benefits, compact or full-size, are only part of what we have to sell to the prospect who thinks that perhaps an intermediate car has what he wants. We also have price to sell. I've checked out some comparative manufacturer suggested retail prices, and it looks like we're really competitive. Without going into dollars and cents, Valiant V100 is well under the corresponding in-between models. Valiant V200 is under all except Rambler Classic. Signet 200, a luxury sports compact, is priced under all the in-between cars when they are comparably equipped. Signet 200 is also priced under the Special and F85 Strippo models. As for luxury and economy, you can really do a selling job with Signet 200 to the guy who wants both plus the special characteristics of a compact car. And if he wants a V8 along with those special characteristics of a compact, we have it. The V100 two-door is the lowest priced V8 on the market. And the Signa 200 is the lowest priced bucket seat V8. How about prices of the full-size Plymouth and the intermediates? Well, we're very competitive there too. For example, with our low-line Savoy, you'll notice we're under the Special and F85 and only a little over the others. Our price position with Fury and Sport Fury is also very competitive with comparably equipped intermediates. And when you call attention to the very slight difference in monthly payments, our prices look mighty attractive to the prospect you've qualified on really wanting full-sized car features with all the trimmings. Let's check some full-size car features. Every Plymouth offers the prospect who's got a notion to compromise, but isn't quite sure yet. To start with, Plymouth has V8 engine options that top anything the intermediates have in the way of horsepower and performance. You can imagine, for instance, taking a man who's interested in both price and power and talking to him about a Commando 426 or even a 383 in a Savoy. And still on the subject of performance, we have three-speed push-button torque flight automatic transmission with the highest breakaway ratio in the industry. All the intermediates, except Rambler and Fairlane, have a two-speed automatic transmission. Fairlane offers their three-speed only with the optional 289 cubic inch V8. We have torsion air suspension, while all the others have either four coil springs or coils up front and leaves and back. And Plymouth's better ride is something your in-between car-minded man should experience. In the safety department, we have safety rim wheels, more brake lining area, and the only ones beside Plymouth with bonded lining are Chevelle and Rambler Classic. Plymouth has unitized construction. It's tougher and quieter riding than the body-on-frame construction used by the BOPs and the Chevelle. Valiant has practically all of these extra quality features too, and they're a big part of your Valiant sales story. Well, I think you'll agree that when you do some comparing, you've got two great sales stories. One for the prospect who really wants what he can get in Valiant, the best all-around compact, and one for the prospect who wants the full-size benefits he can have in a get-up-and-go Plymouth. The thing to do, as I look at it, is to qualify your prospect as to what he really wants in his next new car. The particular benefits of a compact are those of a full-sized car as compared to a compromised car. Perhaps the biggest thing to remember is that we have on the shelf price cars, performance cars, luxury cars, economy cars, and just about any combination of those qualities your prospect can think of. For price and power,
There's a Savoy with 365 horsepower and four-speed stick shift. For bucket seats, vinyl trim, and other luxury features, plus low initial cost and operating economy, there's Signet 200. It's simply up to us to find out just what combination he'll buy, and then to show him that a certain Plymouth or Valiant is the best answer to his needs. When you do that, you're tailoring the prospect's desires to fit the very fine features and benefits we have in our automobiles. And that's what makes a salesman.